you see the, the most recent stuff first. And as I was looking at the results of this hit, uh, I noticed one paper that really changed an important way that I have viewed protandum vis-a-vis -vis cancer. And I discussed this with a number of you this morning, and this is a big topic, protandum and cancer patients. And this paper looks at not protandum, but curcumin, one of our ingredients. And curcumin in and of itself is a NERF2 activator. Protandum uh, is greatly amplified. It works better than curcumin because we've got the synergy of the five. But the mechanism is the same. Curcumin activates NERF2. Protandum activates NERF2 more strongly. And just look at the title of this paper. And I think this can speak to you. There, it's a little obtuse, maybe. But you can, look, you can look at that title and figure it out. Curcumin the golden spice from Indian saffron. Uh, the researcher here is Dr. Agarwal from India, and he has a particular affinity, I think, for, <laughs> for, for Ayurvedic medicine, for traditional medicine from India. He's at Baylor Medical Center in Houston, Texas, well known in the field of NERF2 activators. So curcumin is a chemosensitizer and radiosensitizer for tumors. What does that mean? Tumors are treated with chemotherapy and with radiation. The reason for treating tumors with those two treatments, and they both increase oxidative stress substantially, is that unlike most other therapies that you get from the doctor that tend to make your cells work better, these two are designed to kill cells because your body, if you have cancer, contains cells that are rogue cells. They're out of control. They're multiplying, uh, trying to overtake your body. And a concern has been, because chemotherapy and radiotherapy both increase oxidative stress in an attempt to kill cancer cells, there's been a controversy for a number of years. Is antioxidant therapy a good idea here? Because you may actually protect the cells that you want to kill. You're using a therapy that focused oxidative stress on these cells with the idea of pushing them over the edge, killing them. And therefore, I have recommended to everyone who's asked me for the last five years, should I take protandum if, I'm, if I've got a cancer diagnosis, I'm about to undergo chemotherapy or radiation therapy? And my conservative response has been, because this is controversial, some scientists argue don't do it because you may protect the cancer. Others have said do it because you may protect the other tissues more than you protect the cancer. We didn't really have a definitive, definitive answer. This paper says activating NERF2 actually sensitizes the tumors to radiation and to chemo. So it's going to have a bigger effect. Okay. And the other part of that title is just as important. NERF2 activators are chemoprotectors and radioprotectors for normal organs. So imposing a NERF2 activator changes the way that tumors and normal tissues respond to radiation, and it does it in the best possible way. It makes the radiation more effective at eliminating the tumor and less effective at causing damage to the rest of your body that really needs to survive. Right. So again, what's my point here? This is a changing scenario. Every week, I do these searches myself. I look at the most recent new papers that have just hit the press, and this is the kind of thing I learn. And it changes the way I view pro protanum. I said what I say today about it is very different from what I said four or five years ago. And this is precisely the reason. We're, we're in the middle of a rapidly changing field, and we need to stay tuned to this company and to sites such as PubMed.gov to get the latest information. So don't just sit back and say, I learned about protandum a year ago. I'm going to use what I learned then. You need to keep at it. I wish it were simpler, but it isn't. It's complicated. So hang in there. Do your best to keep up with this 
do your best to use this as an impressive tool. If you sit down with someone who's trying to decide, should I take this supplement or another supplement, a competing product perhaps, flip open your laptop, type in pubmed.gov and say, what's the other supplement you're concerned about or considering? <laughs> type it in. Now, s some of them actually do have peer-reviewed published studies, not many, not many products. Most products you type in, you get no hits at all. It's not there. And they may say, well, the company says on their website it does this, it does that. Okay, they, if it's true, they should submit it to a journal. They should get a peer-reviewed published paper. Then it will mean something. 